Is it bad to pop your knuckles, right? Does it cause arthritis? I'm sure you've heard this. I'm sure we all have heard that it causes arthritis at some point. But in order to answer this question, I think it's best we look at some of the anatomy of the hand. So you are looking at a dorsal aspect of a right human hand. And I want to bring your focus to these right here. These are called metacarpophalangeal joints or MP joints because no one really wants to say metacarpophalangeal. But beyond them, we have what are called the inter phalangeal joints or IP joints. And these are examples of what are called diarthrosis or synovial joints. These are the highly mobile joints in your body, right? If you can move it, chances are good that is a synovial joint. And synovial joints are the ones that pop or at least mostly pop. There's different kinds of popping. I should probably say this, right? There's an abnormal kind of popping that's more like tissue flipping and flopping all over the place and we call that crepitus. That is a whole different story for another day, right? We're talking about just like your typical joint cracking, joint popping type sounds. So that's not really technically, I guess, depends on who you ask, a crepitus, but that is going to be happening inside of synovial joints. So synovial joints are formed by what are called fibrous membranes or fibrous capsules on the outside. So if we're looking at this, you can see a bunch of tendons and these tendons are traveling on the dorsal aspect of the hand and actually most of the tendons you're looking at are coming from the entire forearm, right? So the muscle belly is all the way up here in the form and then that turns into tendons, traverses through the wrist, over the hand, and then it courses into the hand and goes towards like those distal uh, bones of the fingers. But there are some muscles inside of the hand itself, it's just not very many. But around those tendons, you're gonna see like this cloudy look. That is connective tissue. And more specifically, it's what's called the fibrous membrane. The fibrous membrane is kind of like a ligament. In fact, some texts will call it the capsular ligament. And what it's doing is it's connecting the bones of your hand. So deep inside of the dorsal aspect or palm of your hand is what are called metacarpal bones. And then in the digits, we have what are called phalanxes. And so these phalanxes need to be connected to the metacarpal bones and that occurs with that capsular ligament or fibrous membrane. But just deep to that is a very thin piece of tissue called a synovial membrane. And synovial membranes are what produce synovial fluid, which is a lubricating fluid that has the consistency of egg whites. And what it does is it works with cartilage. On either end of these bones here, on the articulating surfaces of them, you're gonna find what's called hyaline cartilage, which is very smooth and slippery but you still want to have some kind of fluid to aid in that reduction of friction as a joint. Because I mean, if you think about how much you can move your joints, that's a lot of friction or potential friction. So you want to reduce that as much as possible. And so that's what the synovial fluid is there for. And this is an important player, or in fact, the most important player in terms of joint popping or cracking. And that's because inside of this fluid, we have dissolved gases, namely hydrogen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and oxygen. And what you have to understand is that when you actually change the volume of that joint capsule, so this is an enclosed space filled with fluid. Let's say I start to like push my hand in slightly different positions on that joint. And what I'm doing is I'm actually changing the space inside. And as I increase the volume of that space, I decrease the pressure. And when you do that, you create something what's called cavitation. And this is where those dissolved gases rapidly form gas bubbles. And here's the interesting part. It's the formation of the gas bubble that creates the sound. It's not the bursting of the bubbles. We used to think it was the bursting of the bubbles, but it's actually the formation of those gas bubbles that creates that joint popping sound. So the question is, is that bad for you? <laughs> and the, and it's just the short answer is actually no, there's zero evidence, or maybe not zero, but very little evidence to suggest that popping your joints is bad for you in the sense that the formation and even bursting of those bubbles is going to cause any harm. And I should say that it takes around 15 to 20 minutes or so for those bubbles to actually burst. Some of them might burst during the knuckle popping, you know, extravaganza, but most of them are actually going to take some time to actually break down. And that's why it takes time for you to be able to pop your joints again, because you need to be able to form the bubbles in the first place. But do they actually cause damage to the joint? It doesn't look like it. Um, and there's been a, quite a few studies on this. In fact, we've even looked at this through an MRI in real time with people popping joints, and it doesn't seem like there's really any damage occurring here. But there's a really big caveat here because the position you have to put your joint in to achieve that pop could be damaging. So 
when I was growing up, my sister would pop her knuckles like this, push them together, and I thought it was so cool. So I wanted to try and do that myself, but I couldn't figure it out. But I was able to pop my knuckles if I pushed my hand back. And then over time, I started to develop hypermobility in my hand, and that's exactly what I have. No one is going to argue that this is good for the hand, right? I am putting my joints in a really hyperextended position that they're not meant to have, and that can cause damage, right? I'm stretching my skin. I'm stretching tendons, right? I am stretching that capsular ligament or fibrous membrane. And sure, it does have elastic proteins inside of it, but it doesn't mean it's there to be stretched as much as you want it to be stretched. My point here is the position you put the joint in is extremely important. So if you're out there, you know, like yanking on your neck and you get that pop, right? If you're, if you're like me, here's another one. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. I don't know if you can hear that. Right there, my elbows are popping. The only reason that happened is because when I was a kid, I felt what I thought was pressure in my joint. So I went up to my room, put my arm on my bedpost, placed my hand like this, and I just pushed. And I remember, this is, this is real. I was sitting there screaming, I'm like, ah! And then it popped. Again, I'm like six or seven years old. My elbow has never stopped popping since then. I, like, I think I compromised the joint, and now what happens is it very easily slips in out of place somewhat, creating excess volume, causing cavitation, and you get those bubbles forming. That is bad. This is bad. So, and I think like popping your back, that's a whole video we're gonna have to like, discuss, right? Chiropractics in general, because there's nuances there, because we're also looking at different joints in the back um, than just like your typical synovial joints, although there are synovial joints. So I think like generally speaking though, I think it's safe to say that popping your joints isn't bad for you inherently, Nothing is wrong with the form, forming bubbles inside your joints, but the position you put yourself in to achieve it is very, very important. So um, do that, do with that as you will. If you're someone who enjoys learning like this in short, information-dense type lessons, then you're gonna absolutely love the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform for STEM subjects. That is math, science, and computer science. They have thousands of lessons and are adding more every single month. Brilliant is fun, interactive and has lessons for whatever your skill level may be. Right now I'm doing a deep dive into computer science and specifically into large language models. I am verifiably obsessed with artificial intelligence, but since I don't have a background in computer science, Brilliant's lessons have been incredibly valuable in helping me understand what's actually happening, underneath the hood that is, when I ask ChatGPT, BARD, and other models questions. If you're interested, visit brilliant.org slash IHA to start a free 30-day trial, and they'll give the first 200 people there 20% off their annual subscription. You can go ahead and find that link in the description below. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit, and I'll see you in the next video.